everyone and welcome back to the no zone the place for fun and learning i'm charlie hello everybody it's great to see you again my name is wanja and i am marara now we have got a lot of excellent things planned for today's show teacher pendo has a wonderful session for us in cool words and of course maspidi is taking us out there that's right but first Let's go to the chiller zone because our studio guests are waiting to say hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. Why don't you say a big hello to everyone who's watching us at home? Hi. All right. Now, before we start, today's show is all about the things we do in school. So, why don't we take a register? Mwenda. Here. Okay. Mutani. Here. Okay. Jake. Here. Excellent, excellent. Jatelo. Here. All right then. Mwangi. Here. Excellent. Marara. Not there. Marara. <laughs> Marara. Oh, right here, right here, right here. Oh. <laughs> All right, we will finish this register in a moment. But for now, what are the buzzwords? Library. Flag. Assembly. Spelling. And writing. Very good. Now, for you at home, these are very important words, so we hope that you will listen out for them throughout this show. But for now, it's time for us to go and visit our friends in Junction Juniors. Again. Hmm? You missed assembly and your first lesson has already begun. Would you like to explain yourself? I'm sorry, teacher. I was helping. It is not. I don't want to listen to your excuses. This is the third time you've been late this week and you're always making up stories. Hmm? Tell me, how are we supposed to believe anything you say? You have to be punished for your lateness. So you stay in class during break time and you arrange the class library. Teacher, I have to work on my talent show, peace with the rest of my group. Hey, 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 hey. You need to learn a lesson and sacrifice your time. Go! guitar like last year. Bakari will really miss out. Oh yeah, I'm going to sing. I'm just going to be like red. What about you, Leleti? Are you excited about the play? I don't think so. I just think it's a waste of time dancing around on the stage. Really, huh? Eh, Briar, what are you wearing? This is my costume for the class play. I'm going to be a cowboy. It's better than wearing school uniforms. <coughs> role in the whole of the play. You get to be the hero. Every hero needs a partner. Chapendo said we should learn to work together. 
But how can we work together if James isn't here? Don't worry, you can practice at lunchtime instead. That way the play will be perfect for the show in the evening. I don't think so. I still think our lessons are much more important. What? Leliti, we have plenty of time to think about our spellings and grades. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's have some fun. I'm not sure about my math. I never know how to calculate the sizes of areas. Areas are easy. Look at a rectangle. You just multiply the length times the width. So a rectangle that is three centimeters by four centimeters is an area of 12 centimeters square. Hey, Lele, do you see? You know areas, so you have no excuse not to rehearse at lunchtime. Yeah. Hey, James, wait. Teacher, I've already arranged the library books just as you asked. That was your punishment for being late. But what about your telling lies? I wasn't lying. I'm going to be late for my talent show. Schools are for lessons, not fun and game. I want you to go and copy lines from the blackboard and make sure your handwriting is neat. Let's go. Where is James? He's always late. Ah. And when he does arrive, he'll be full of his made-up excuses. <laughs> Let's practice anyway. Yeah. I still think we should be studying. Lelati, are you sure? This is a great thing. School isn't all about books. Yeah, and children have the right to play. This is an extra activity to make us better students, Lelati. Come on, Lelati. Lelati. Tell us the reason I don't want to do this. Are you scared? You are scared. I'm not scared. I'm never scared. Ah, let's just go look for yeah, James. Let's go. Go. Maybe I'll stay here. Okay. Bye. You see, James, isn't this more fun than practicing for some silly talent show? Yes, teacher. And maybe if you spend more time studying, you'll be able to get a few more ticks and less crosses. But teacher... Carry on with your work. Leleti, are you excited about today's talent show? Teacher Penda, do we have to do this show? Is it that important? I think we should be spending most of our time in class. Leleti, drama and sports are very important to students. Such activities help you develop and grow while learning about life. It's okay to be nervous. I know it can be very scary performing in front of a lot of people. When I was younger, I was shy and I never thought I would grow up to be a teacher. But then one time I was at a school play and it really helped boost my confidence. Really? And I'm telling you, it's going to be so much fun. And once you've practiced enough, you'll see just how easy it is. Are you going to be brave? Good. Let's go find the rest. Hear you whisper? Eh? I think you all ought to come inside and join James with his copying of lines. Sorry, Chucky Manda, we didn't mean to be rude. We are just coming to call James for our play. He's going to be my partner. Not only was James late again this morning, but he was full of his usual excuses. But I was telling the truth. Ah, James, we found you. Madam Pendle, I'm in the middle of punishing James. He organized books, and now he's copying his lines. Oh. Not only was he late again this morning, but he lied about it too. Please, teacher Kimanda, we need James. Otherwise, our play won't work. He'll just have to miss that silly 
talent show. But it's a pen, though. You've always said how important sports and plays are for students. And it teaches us to work together. All those activities are important, but so is discipline. I'm afraid James will have to stay behind and finish his punishment. But I was helping someone. <laughs> Hello, I'm my late for the talent show. And what are you doing here? I met with James earlier. He helped me and he told me to come and watch this play that he was performing. I was running school and I saw Snake. He needed my help and I helped him. I was carrying my grill to the Mabuki's party. The handle broke, so James helped me by going back to the town. He came back with the Mkokoteni driver and a rope. I'm sorry if I put you into trouble. I'm innocent. I was telling the truth. Well, Mrs. Kimanda, it seems we misjudged James and we've punished him enough for today. Now, Snake, I think you're a bit too early for the talent show. Then I have to go back to my grill. Well, in that case, we just could have an early performance just for you and Mrs. Kimanda. That would be amazing. But I don't think Lelit wants to perform in the play anymore. Well, Lelit is more than ready for her performance. <laughs> Trouble. Enough of your stories. You're always making things up. The hero had grown tired of his partner telling lies and things. I'm telling the truth. Believe me. Follow me. Luckily, our hero was feeling kind and decided to follow his partner. Soon it became clear that the partner was telling the truth. Ha! You think you're better than me, hero? I can defeat you and take over the town. Don't try to stop me. I have a hostage. Please help me, please! Our hero, with the help of his partner, were able to chase away the evil bamboo. There are two of us defending this town. Now leave and never come back. Amishi was saved and the hero saved his town. But the partner learned that if you ever tell so many stories, nobody will believe even if you're telling the truth. That was great, guys. I'm sure everybody liked the talent show. Thanks again, guys, for your great performance. Oh, I really enjoyed that. James' story was so exciting. Yes, that's true. His imagination is amazing. Anyway, the buzzwords. How many of them did you spot? Teacher Pendo used the word handwriting. Very good, that's true. Jake? James was late for assembly. Very good, Jatelo. Tell me. I had the word spelling. Excellent, good. excellent. Now, what else did you learn from this episode of Junction Juniors? We should always try to be on time. James was punished for being late. Very good. I see you have all been paying attention. Well done. That's my favorite sound. It's time to learn something from Teacher Pendo. It's time for cool words. Hello, everyone. Hello, Teacher Pendo. Now, today we're going to perfect our skills in pronunciation. Now, let's look at these words. Let's read them together, shall we? Chin, shin, chin, ship, chair, chair, chop, shop, chop, sharp. Very good. Now, what do you notice about these words? Yes, Jatelo? They sound the same, but they have different meanings. That's mm. correct. Mm, yes, I was a bit confused. I found myself saying ch instead of ch and ch instead of sh. And how do I get to say these sounds without getting confused, Teacher Pendo? Well, that's a very good question, Marara. Now, one way to help you pronounce the words correctly is to remember that when you see sh in a word, it tells you to keep quiet. Now, let's say sh together. Shh. 
Excellent. Well, I hope that makes it easier for you to read words beginning or ending with sh. Now let's have some fun practicing saying sh. Marara, why don't you say for us this sentence twice? A fish in a dish, a fish in a dish. Mm -mm. <clears throat> a fish in a dish? A fish in a dish. Excellent. Now remember, the trick is to think about the sound sh. Now let's move on to the sound ch. Now in this word, the ch sounds like a sneeze. Oh, that's no problem, Teacher Pendo, because actually my nose has been itching for some time. Just... Uh, uh, <gasps> <laughs> Marara, I said it sounds like a sneeze, not is a sneeze. Oh, sorry, teacher Pendo. <gasps> oh, bless you, Marara. It's a good thing you remembered your hanky. Now let's all say ch. ch. Now the sneeze sound ch applies to most words, but in some words like orchestra, the ch makes a k sound. And in a word like chef, the ch makes the sh sound, okay? Yes. yes. Now let's read these words together again. Chin, shin, chip, ship, cha, sha, chop, shop, chop, shop. Oh, that was much better. I found them much easier to say correctly. It's good to hear that, Marara. Now, I have a little sentence for you all to try. You can join it at home. In fact, why don't you write it down and keep practicing it? Here we go. Charles Shikoti, the shopkeeper, chopped a chunk of sugarcane with his sharp chopping knife. Now, let's all say that together. Charles Shikoti, the shopkeeper, chopped a chunk of sugarcane with his sharp chopping knife. Now, who wants to try quickly? Yes, Muyoti? Charles Shikoti, the shopkeeper, cho chopped a chunk of sugarcane with his sharp chopping knife. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Oginde? Charles Shikoti, the shopkeeper, chopped his a chunk of sugarcane with his sharp chopping knife. Oh, can I try? Can I try? Yes, Marara, go right ahead. <clears throat> Charles Shikoti, the shopkeeper, chopped a chunk of shu 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 sha. <laughs> oh, I can't do this. Why don't you keep practicing? Come, come with me, children. This week we are visiting some very friendly people, and I'm sure you will love them. This is Thika School for the Blind. Eyes are very important parts of our body. They let us see all that is happening around us. You know, I've always wondered how the blind are able to do their stuff when they actually can't see. But we can find out that and much more. Come on, people, come with me. The headmistress tells me that Thika School for the Blind hosts over 200 children from all over the country. However, each kid here has a different story and they all need special care and attention. Even though most of the times they depend on well wishes, the school takes care of them and gives them a good environment where they get to share and learn. While most of the pupils use a guiding stick to help them walk down the corridors without falling down or hitting objects, some have mastered the path so well that they know where and when to cross. Let us clap for him. Mmm, it's break time, people. Let the game start. I'm told since these children can't see clearly or nothing at all, their sense of touch and smell is very good. Sound is very important for the blind since it guides them. For instance, this ball has jiggles that makes some noise as it is thrown. Isn't that impressive? Here, their favorite game is goalball, and they love it. Now that the kids can't use a pen to write or learn, during lessons, they have learned how to use Braille. The Braille is a special machine that has patterned dots that represent all the letters and numbers. One uses their fingers to punch the letters or the numbers they want on the paper to form a sentence. Another writing tool they use is slate and styler, used just like a pen and a paper. Hey, look, I'm trying. I'm trying to learn how to use one too. 
but it's not as easy as it looks. Have you met Wairimo yet? Wairimo wants to be a musician when she grows up. This must be very challenging. Let me help out Wairimo. It is not as easy as it looks. Maybe with a few more lessons from Wairimo, I will learn how to even write my name. I really wish Wairimo all the best. Maybe she will be one of the greatest musicians in the world. Oh, I wish I could spend more time with these kids. But because I have to go and milk my cows before it's too late, it's now time for me to say goodbye to my special friend Wairimo and of course everyone else. Bye! Wow, that was such a lovely trip to the Thika School for the Blind. Mm -hmm. Actually, we want to say thank you to them because they let Maspidi into their school and he made so many friends. Mm, yes, and they were very friendly people. That's right, Marara. You could almost say that they are people you could count on. Talking about counting, let's hope that our studio guests are good at it because it's time for number run. This is a game that we invented so that we could help Marara with his math. Oh yes, please help me. All right, now the game is very simple. On the board there are three sums, just like this example sum. Now if you notice, there's a little something missing in the sum right here. Now all our number runners have to do is solve the sum and then go and find the solution in the number pit over there, like this. Now, we didn't want to make it too easy, so you have to find the number among all of these. Now, once you find that number like this, you go back to the blackboard. Now, once you get here on the board, you need to make sure that you put your number in the correct position, like that. Please make sure that you don't get your numbers mixed up. Why? Because the moment this number is on the board, it's stuck and you cannot change it. That's right. Now, once you've solved the sum, it's time for you to run, run, run across to your teammates and tag in the person to do the next sum, just like this. You have three sums to solve in just 45 seconds. So, we all need to cheer our number runners with the correct answer. Have you understood? Yes. Very good. Now remember, in number run, speed is everything. Because if you do manage to solve the three sums within 45 seconds, you get to take these wonderful maths books back to your school. Are the rules clear? Yes! Are you ready to play number run? Yes! Very good. Muyodi, I believe you're number run number one. Yes. Please step here. Let's put 45 seconds on the clock and reveal that first sum. 14 multiplied by what is 28? Go. Help me with the right answer. Help me with the right answer. Find it, it's there. Find it, find it, find it, find it. You don't have much time. You sure that's your final answer? Tag the next person, please. Go, 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 go. Come on, come on, come on. What plus 32 is 103? Go. <laughs> help her with the right answer. Work it out, work it out. And help her with it. You don't have much time. You need to find it and you need to help her with the right answer. Help her with the right answer. Find it. Find it. Find it. It's there. Find it. Find it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Find it. Find it. You're running out of time. Hurry up. The answer is there. Find it. <laughs> Stop the clock. It's up. <laughs> come on back. Come on back. Rejoin your teammates. Not to worry. Let's look at what you did. All right then, on to the first sum. We asked you, 14 multiplied by what is 28? And you went there and you found the number two and that's what you give to us. Is that the correct answer? Yes! Now on to the second sum. We asked you, what plus 32 is 103? You were looking for 87. Is 87 the correct answer? No. So what's the correct answer? 
71. Excellent. 71 is the correct answer, and we will quickly put it together. And on to the third sum. Let's reveal it. 56 divided by 7 is what? What would have been the answer? 8. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. 8 would have been the correct answer. So we will quickly put it there. So you managed to complete one sum out of three, but nonetheless, you participated in the game. So let's give them all a big round of applause. Well done. We still have a full half hour of fun and learning right here on The No Zone. So don't go anywhere, because we'll be right back. Off, why don't we remind everyone at home what the Nozone buzzwords are? Library. Flag. Assembly. Spelling. And writing. All of these words are teaching us about school activities. Now they're going to be showing up all over our program, so try and listen out for them. That's right, but for now, Marara, why don't you give us a clue as to what animal we'll be learning about today in the wild zone? Hmm, well, Renjarukia is teaching us about different kinds of animals today. We're, huh. we're learning about more than one animal. Yes, but this is because these animals are quite hard to find. Hmm. I wonder what makes this animal so special. But there's only one way to find out. Let's go and see in the wild zone. Hello, Nozone Rangers. I am Ranger Rukia. Can you see that small, lovely looking animal moving around the rock? That's a honey badger. It is a very shy animal. Don't make noise. It might hear us and run away. Honey badgers have been known to be shy animals for many years. It is very hard for one to see a honey badger as it runs and hides itself. They live in holes under tree roots and in old termite mountains. They are nocturnal animals, which means that they mostly come out at night. The honey badger has a very interesting color on its body. It has a white stripe running from the head all the way down to the tail. The lower part of its body is black. It looks like it's wearing a long white thin coat that only covers its upper body. Honey badgers are heavily built with a broad head, small eyes, and a small nose. They have very small ears on the sides of their head. They have strong short legs with claws for digging holes when hunting and a stout tail. The male honey badger is bigger than and weighs more than the female honey badger. Unlike humans, honey badgers don't live together in families. They like living alone or in pairs. They marry for life, just like we do. Interesting. They only come together when there's a big feast for them to eat. The honey badger loves feeding on honey very much. But it also eats fish, snakes, birds, rodents, for example, rats, and some vegetable foods. Honey badgers have a very good sense of smell. They use their noses to hunt animals and insects living underground. They sniff inside holes where they find rodents, snakes, and worms that they feed on. Sometimes, they use their claws to climb up trees in order to find food, for example, eggs and beehives. Even though it is very shy, the honey badger is also very fearless. It has been known to fight off other strong animals like the lion and the leopard. They often brave the sting of hundreds of bees to get their tasty honey. They have strong jaws that help them fight and can release a bad smell from their rear that chases away the enemy. Sometimes they are even stung to death by bees when they raid their hives. Farmers who have beehives also kill the honey badgers when protecting their farms. By conserving the honey badger's environment, rangers like you and I can not only protect the honey badger from harm, but also protect the land of our farmers. Interesting. Bye.
Wow, I really liked that. Did you enjoy it? Yes! I didn't know there were so many shy animals in the wild. The only shy animals that I know is Marara. Yeah. Oh, come on, I'm not so shy. Ah, oh, really, Marara? Mm. Are you sure? <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to learn more about Ranger Rukia and the Wild Zone, you should become a member of the No Zone Club. That's right. Now, all you have to do is send us a text which has the word zone plus your name and address to... 3036. That's right. And you will become an instant No Zone Club member. But remember to ask your parent to help you send the text. I know what that sound means. It's time for hot numbers. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Hot Numbers. What has it that you've improved tremendously in maths? Is that true? Yes! Good. Now, last week, we learned about perimeters. Oh, oh yes, I remember. Perimeter is the total distance around a figure. Very good. Now, today, we are going to learn about area. Area? What? Do you mean area like where I come from? I come from Nairobi National Park area. No, Marara, nice try, but that's not the answer. The area I am talking about is the space covered by an object or a shape. We call this space or surface the area. Is that clear? Yes! Good. Now, in front of me, I have a newspaper page and a square of a paper. Now, which one is bigger? Yes, Wanyaga? The newspaper page. That's right. The newspaper page is bigger. It has a bigger surface, meaning it has a bigger area. Now, I have two leaves here. Now, I will call this leaf A and this leaf B. So which one has a smaller surface area? Yes, Mwenda? B. B. So B has a smaller surface area. Now let's look at how we can measure area. I have two different size papers and I have some exercise books. Now I want you to place some exercise books on the paper and cover the surface, okay? And then you will tell me how many papers, how many books you will have used to cover the surface. Now you can do this at home too. Uh, if you have a newspaper and some books, just cover this and measure the area. Are you through? Yes. 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 Okay. So how many books have you used to cover your paper? One. Two, three, four. Very good. How about this side? How many books have you used? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this group has used more books to cover the paper because this paper has a bigger surface area. Now area is measured in square units. Now look, I can use these square papers to cover this exercise book. Then we will count how many squares we will have used to measure this book. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20. Very good. So this book is 20 squares. I like covering things with squares to find the area, but what if it's too big a surface and I don't have enough squares? Well, that's a very good question, Marara. Now, we can measure area by either counting the squares on the surface or we could multiply the number of rows by the number of columns. Now, let's look at how this manila paper was covered. Now, how many books did we use to cover the length? One, two, three. Very good. How about the width? One, two. That is correct. We could multiply the length times the width. So three times two. What is our answer? Yes, Jake? Six. Very good. And how many books had we used to cover the paper? Yes, Mwangi? Six. That's right. The area is six unit squares. We always measure our area in unit squares. Okay? 
Yes. Now we have found that area is length times width. Now, let's have a go at working out the surface area of this rectangle. Remember, we need to multiply the number of columns by the number of rows. Now let's count the length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Very good. Now let's count the width. One, two, three, four. Oh. So we need to multiply twelve by four. And what is twelve times four? 48. Well done, everyone. Good work. Now remember, area is? The space covered by an object or a shape. Well done. Well, that's all we have time for today on Hot Numbers. Hello kids, this is Auntie Sana. We've come out to the Ramoma Gallery where we're going to meet a friend of mine who's going to show you what she does. Maggie, welcome to Art Zone. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Hello kids, my name is Maggie Otieno. I'm a sculptor and I want to explain to you who a sculptor is. A sculptor is an artist who works in three-dimensional works. So when I say three-dimensional works, they are works that you can actually touch and go round. So some of the three-dimensional works are like stone, wood, and metal. Okay, first of all, you always must have protective goggles because when you're chipping on the stone, it might go into your eyes. I will encourage Mudeo to just to move, move away a bit. <laughs> yes, I will. And then these are some of the tools that I use. This is a flat chisel, mm -hmm. and then this is a toothed chisel because it has these uh, scratch marks. Okay, I'm going to move away from you <laughs> so that you can give your demonstration. Okay, before I get to sculpt, I have to have a chalk or a charcoal. So I'll just draw something that I want to carve out. So that is a circle. And then I shall put my protective attire. Okay, kids, that was a short demonstration of how sculpting should be taking place. Okay, so it seems that it's really hard work, but I'm wondering, can kids do this? Unfortunately, they are not able to do this because I use very heavy materials, and these are very sharp tools. They are dangerous. They are very dangerous, but uh -huh. there are other forms of sculptures that uh, you can also work on. Mm -hmm. So other forms of sculptures is soap. I know most of you know how to use plasticine. Mm -hmm. and there's or even also, clay. You can yes, use clay. you can also use clay. I know most of you play with clay. Mm -hmm. And you can also do paper mache. If you follow me, I shall show you some of the sculptures that I've done. They are not made out of stone, but you'll have a glimpse of what other materials I use. Okay. Hey kids, these are some of my sculptures here at Ramoma. They are made out of metal. And these metal ones have a faces. Well, kids, I hope you're feeling very inspired by meeting my friend Maggie, who's an artist and a sculptor. So go make some sculpture this week, and we'll see you again on Art Zone. Goodbye. interesting art project. Oh yes it was. I think I should become a sculptor. I can do that at home and become famous. The first lion sculptor in the world. <laughs> but that will have to wait for a bit. Because right now it's time for you at home to see if you are good enough to beat our competitors here. Uh -huh. It's time for Spell It. Animal, animal, chapter, building, narrow, building, respect, building, respect, respect, deep, deep vegetable, work work, 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 work. Welcome to Spell It. Mwangi, 
Jatelo, and Mutanu. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with your very own Nozon Dictionary. Each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Now the more words you spell correctly, the more points you have, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Wangi, you're up first. Please, take your place on the spelling zone. Wangi, your 30 seconds start now. Draw. D-R-A-W. Tick. T-I-C-K. Games. G A M E S Notice N N O T I C E Subject S U B G E C T Spelling S P E W L I N G Uniform U U N I F O R M Assembly A A W S E M D Y Well done. Well done. Well done. Please step back. Jatelo, you're up next. Kindly take your place on the spelling zone. Jatelo, your 30 seconds start now. Flag, F L A G. Study, S T U U D Y. Ruler, R U L E R. Eraser, E R E R A. E S R lesson L E double S E A double S O N whisper pass handwriting H A N D W I T I is up. Well done, Jatelo. Mutanu, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Mutanu, your 30 seconds start now. Mark. M-A-R-K. Pupil. P-U-P-I-L. Brick. B-R-E-A-K. Shelf. S-H-E-L-F. Library. L-I-B-R-A-R-Y. Present. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. Calendar. C-A-L-E-N-D-E-R. Educate. E-D-U-C-A-T-E. Schedule. S C H E D U L E. Activities. A C T I V I T I E S. Time is up. Well done. Well done. In third place, we have Jatello. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Round of applause. Well done. Now, in second place, we have. Mwangi, which means our winner for today is Mutano with a total of nine points. Let's give a round of applause, everyone. Congratulations, Mutano. You are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Show everyone your dictionary. A round of applause. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you because you spelled very many words correctly. So why don't we sit back and relax while we go off for another story. It's time for African Tales. Hello everyone. I am going to tell you a very special story. It's about the disobedient Wanzela. Don't forget to listen out for this week's buzzwords. Once, there lived a young girl known as Wanzela. She had been orphaned at a tender age when her parents died from an incurable disease. Then a loving old woman who had a spare bed in her humble home adopted her. The old woman lived with her old husband. They had never been able to have children of their own, so they were overjoyed when Wanzera went to live with them. 
they treated her like their own daughter and together they took very great care of her. They fed her, clothed her, and taught her many fun games, as well as how to spell and draw and have a neat handwriting. However, despite all this loving care, Wanzilla did not grow up to become a good girl. She became greedy and disobedient. Although the old couple doubled their love for her, Wanzilla did not change. She was always in trouble for whispering in class and for even missing assembly. One morning, Wanzela was asked by her father to return some books to the library on her way to school. She was not to take long as she needed to be on time for school assembly. Hastily, she grabbed the books and headed off towards the library. But as she walked, she thought to herself, hmm, today I will test all the fruits in the forest. And so she headed off into the forest looking for wild fruits. She climbed one tree after another. She was so happy that she forgot about being on time for assembly. In fact, she was bored of carrying the silly library books, and so she left them on the ground near a fruit tree. All day, Wanzela explored the forest, eating delicious fruit. She was so happy that she didn't notice that it was even getting late and the sun was setting. As she wandered through the forest, she saw a beautiful gray egg. She picked up the beautiful egg, curiously turning it over in her hand. Then she exclaimed, I will eat this too. I love eggs. Just then, Wanzela remembered the library books. She began looking for them, but she couldn't remember which tree she had left them under. Forget them, Wanzela said to herself, sitting down to eat the beautiful egg she had found. She removed it from her pocket but just before breaking it, she heard a voice. It sang to her. Please don't break me. Eat me whole. Swallow me in one piece, and you'll never grow old. Greedy Wanzela swallowed the egg swiftly in one big gulp, shell and all. Immediately, Wanzela began to feel very, very sleepy. Darkness covered the whole land and Wanzela fell into a deep sleep in the forest. Back at home, the worried couple looked everywhere for their daughter. All of the teachers said Wanzela hadn't been to their lessons. She hadn't even been in assembly. All the old woman and her husband could do was pray. The next morning, a farmer found Wanzela fast asleep under a tree in the forest. She was snoring loudly and her stomach was swollen very, very swollen. The farmer who had heard about Wanzela going missing picked her up and carried her to her worried parents. As soon as she reached home, her parents called the doctor who examined Wanzela's swollen stomach. The doctor was shocked to feel something moving about inside her. Wanzela was still fast asleep when the doctor gave her some medicine, which meant she didn't feel a thing when the doctor pierced an opening with a sharp knife in her stomach. And can you guess what the doctor saw inside Wanzilla's stomach? Three small, ugly-looking snakes. Wanzilla had swallowed a snake's egg. The doctor almost passed out with shock, but she worked quickly to remove the baby snakes and to stitch up Wanzilla's stomach. When Wanzilla awoke, she was weak and very, very sorry. She hugged her parents long and hard and apologized for losing the library books and for skipping school. She promised them that she would never, never be greedy and disobedient again. From that day on, Wanzela never missed another assembly. She always made sure her uniform was neat and tidy, and she always obeyed her loving and kind parents. The end. Well, wasn't that a great story? It teaches us never to be disobedient to our parents. Well, that's all we had time for today but I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye. Hey, I really love that story. It was great that Wanzela learned such a valuable lesson and won't be disobedient again. Oh yes, uh -huh. it's true. We should always listen to our elders and respect them. And we also have to do as we are told. So that means, sadly, it's time to go. Have you all enjoyed yourselves? 
Yes. Well, we've loved having you here to help us with today's show. Have you all had fun? Yes. yes! Very good. And for you at home, thank you so much for joining us in today's show. We have greatly enjoyed your company. So until then... Bye!